And this is conscious reconstruction and this is Tony Mel one aka Tony the Ghost aka Mr. Mirror Mirror on the Wall who's the prettiest of them all. Me bitch aka I might have fucked your girl and sent her back home to you. AKA you probably shouldn't kiss her. AKA don't think about it. I'm pretty sure that runs into this a- song runs antithetical uh, the entire purpose of this character. AKA uh, Charles is thinking too hard about it. I think hard about everything. AKA, you know, why you think it's backwards? Backwards? Yeah, you said it runs antithetical to what? Antithetical to the entire purpose of this podcast. Yeah. I was just about to say that. Like, he over here promoting dirt nigga shit. <laughs> 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 Unconscious reconstruction. <laughs> I'm not like, going to say that you're wrong, but you really need to think about it. No, nah, no, 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 no. Or you incur I mean, uh, what I'm saying is that that is. A certain mental state. What? Being in that lifestyle. Being Having a 304. your girlfriend cheat on you and then you sending them back to them? No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a particular lifestyle? Let this nigga tell her, yeah. <laughs> oh. You had like, there's an entire, like, sub There's, like, an entire group of people for that. That's their entire thing. It's like, I want Tony to have sex with my girlfriend and send her back to me. Not one. That, that's, that's that's a that's cuck. A, that's a reach. <laughs> that's and I don't want to meet those people. <laughs> I mean, kind of probably old. already are. I'm not trying to meet any of those people. And, oh, and, and engage with them. that sounds wild. I'll pass. Anyway. I, I don't believe those people are a part of our audience, but you do. I didn't say that. <laughs> what I said is, I might have had sex with your girlfriend, and you shouldn't kiss her. <laughs> I didn't say you wanted me to have sex with your girlfriend. Those are two wildly different things. Wildly different. Oh, uh, and you should. You said you might. Hey! <laughs> you ever have like a realization and it'd be like wild as fuck? Do y'all think that the dude that like wanted me to fuck his girlfriend was a cut? Now looking back on it, <laughs> I'm at <bad> Ash's <actually, laughs> Like. Uh, yeah, I feel like this is quite well, a few podcast back that, that, that I was sense. not a part of. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> it's just like the there's way. this dude who wanted me to have sex with the girl. I did he so, want to be there? <laughs> did you want you to videotape it? No, none of those things. That would be weird. But so the way that Tony <laughs> lost his virginity is one of my homies was like, "Hey, you want to fuck my girl?" And I told him no, and I continued to have my great day at Cedar Point. And then he persisted to ask me for like a week. And so I finally was like, "Sure." It's the most cucky shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cucky. <laughs> Cuck yeah, I've butt. I've never seen it ever. I've never had that become like an adjective. It's cucky as fuck. That nigga. That's <laughs> cucky. Yeah, if you're listening, sorry. That, that was some cucky shit to do. No, but maybe he really didn't like the girl. And he just was looking for That's the only thing no, I would think about. Crying. What? That nigga still masturbate to that shit. I bet you. you did it? Yeah. Why did he ask the question then? He probably still do it to get off. Niggas get off like on embarrassment. It was very complex. I don't know. Me and him don't speak anymore. I don't think you would. (laughs) I wouldn't suggest you be in that situation. Because I feel like that's a circular thing. I guess a, in de- a, a decade. Yo, cucks are um, fucking enigmas. Like, I what? I haven't spoken to any of them in a decade. Wait, let me say that. Let me make it more clear. A decade for both of them. Plus. <laughs> I feel like you would leave both of them exactly where they are because they need to be left exactly where they are. Y'all need you guys yeah, to evaluate cucky, yourselves. Cuck fucking cuck world. That's what they, that's what they mean, should have left it. I'm not going to shame who it is. I'm not shaming them either. But it is what it is. Down, cucky like, cucks. I don't know. Like the entire apparently the entire way cook holding started was just kind of weird, but yeah. So I guess that was, but he wasn't in the room or anything. That would be I wouldn't know let that. Happen. See, here's the thing. How do you know he wasn't videotaping what was happening? No, my Ooh, was nigga, locked. what? <laughs> oh, it was happening in your space. Yeah, I was the one with the apartment. That's what he was crying about. 
He was there. No. <laughs> he was there. I can't the do this room. anymore. Drinking. And Why then, would? This, this making is my stomach hurt. Weird thing I know. There's banging at my door, and then him and her arguing, and he crying, and then they leave. My stomach hurt. Ooh, man. <laughs> Where do you find these people? What do you mean? I didn't find them. They, I didn't know that that was Realistically, to me, it sounds like that's something that she really wanted to do, and he just this eventually went along Either with he it. Was touched, she was touching him, or <clears throat> he... I don't... Um, why is my camera on? I guess he won the lie? test. No. I don't know. It's like, I don't like being tested. If you test me, we're probably going to part ways. I didn't, that's, a, yeah, I didn't think it was a test. That's a real weird thing. That was just something she wanted, and he was going to be down with it, or he was going to go about his business. That's what I thought. I'm like, the girl had to ask, because yeah. this nigga clearly didn't do it after he started yeah, crying. it was clearly an issue after my nigga started crying and banging on the door. So uh, I, I, No, I'm you just look that. at her and say, no. I'll make a song for him. Well, there's something I really want to do. Well, then go do it, but I'm not going to be a part of it. And also, we're done. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell him not to do it. And then if he's my friend, he probably won't. Charles, Charles. this man clearly had issues. Yeah. I don't know. So that was, uh, That's not some normal shit. You that know? was Tony's entrance into uh, having sex. I was like, oh, so this is what this is like. Y'all niggas is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tony's interest into being a, interest into being a full rap scallion. Yeah. It's just like he called you a rap scallion, nigga. I mean, if you got a fence now, if you're you can't box this nigga. You got a fence on guard. What he called you a rap scallion? You a fucking rap scallion? You a rap scallion? You have some rap scallion times. That's what happens. And you, and you have to pull your pants I up. I challenge you like, to a duel. You have to pull your pants up by like. If we don't challenge this nigga right now, I'm fucking middle. leaving. I did. I did. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. If you're wearing anything called pants, you're in the wrong situation. You have to pull up your britches. Oh. <laughs> you have to pull up your britches. In the middle of your britches. It's on on. Like, I'm really definitely there. He did challenge you. It wasn't really a joke. I mean, I'm surprised you actually just have a glove sitting around here. <laughs> That's my challenge glove. <laughs> I challenge you, nigga. That's what it is yeah. now. You realize oh, that, right? Man. Yeah, that's the challenge glove. That's it right there. All right. Well, I guess it's like, I don't know. That's Street not... Fighter at Dawn. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, I'm watching that shit. Dawn. Yeah. Cause... Street Fighter at Dawn. Oh, you got to take, you gotta take the TV you? outside. I'm going to be just gonna be sleep sleep sitting there. All right, it's time to play video games I'm outside. I'm keeping score, shit. You know what? When I was younger, this is weird shit. I used to be really mad at y'all that y'all didn't tell me when y'all lost your virginity. I was like, what's wrong with these niggas? Oh, I mean, it just kind of happened. Probably most people didn't think I lost my virginity as early as I did. I don't know when you did. Uh, I you tend to keep mad? things to myself. <laughs> yeah, and I was mad as shit when I was like... Did you tell 18? them? Yeah. No? Oh, and they just kept their incident close that to their chest? Well, I knew they were virgins, situation. but they were also like, they weren't were coming like i would have to ask we uh, were super like we were really really nerdy they were in private and they were really nerdy yeah so it was just like everyone just kind of assumed that we didn't fuck in and keep no secrets on. he just don't talk about it marcus didn't tell me i did but i had to ask you you didn't oh uh, i just kind of assumed is like oh no that was because old girl came back up okay okay yeah no i remember that uh, no, you you deserve that though <laughs> what? you can't be out here that was like that was after that was afterwards <laughs> who was it number one See, yes, I know you don't. You don't no, pay attention. When I, I do. That is a lie. See? That is a lie. See? That is a lie. See, no, See? you no. should know who know. You should know who that is. Then use a reference. Use a, we can use references. In Did it happen in high years. school? Post no. high school. Post high school. Okay. What about yours? In high school or post high school? You're gonna be probably more surprised about this, but this happened in middle school. Oh, look at you, Charles. <laughs> it's like. And then were you fucking all the way through high school? No. I'm fairly... Like it was an like, accident. <laughs> that shit wasn't, wasn't supposed uh, to happen. It, it definitely wasn't an accident. It was just like, I don't know. I just not <laughs> I like the so your wild oats type of dude. It's like, I'm not going to try and like have sex with everybody. It's well, not everybody, what, but you could have had a girlfriend. Well, no. It's just like, well, it was just this. And then 
first girlfriend in high school didn't happen. Next girlfriend in high school did happen. And it's just like, yeah, it's just kind of interspersed and things happen. I'm like, what? Oh, okay. y'all so cute. So, so <laughs> no, I need you to. Because, like. You right, I did deserve that, but that did happen afterwards. I know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But who was it first? I mean, Home Depot? No. Nah. Yeah. Oh, okay, really? there we go. Yeah. Really? See, I, told I figured you that. it out. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> you did. Yeah, I, I did. figured it out. You did. <laughs> it's just wow. like, all right, post high school. It had to happen wow. at Home Depot. No, that's that not true. That's not true. Marcus had a wild post high school career. <laughs> I did. Yeah, but what is the triggering point? What is the catalyst? It was Home Depot. No, 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 no. it wasn't Home Depot. No. What do you Home hear? Depot was the first time I just stuck my dick in something. <laughs> How did that feel? Doing, doing first nails? of all, everybody shut up. How did that feel when you first stick your dick in a pussy? Like, what did y'all feel like? What was the initial thought? I want to know. I have to Red remember my shit. first sober thought. Just sticking mm. my dick in something. Okay. Uh, I mean... It was weird in a condom. Oh, the jaw fuck with condoms on? <laughs> I wouldn't. That's no the. <laughs> <laughs> My first time was definitely with a condom. Oh, okay. I, I was smart enough at 14 to at least know that. Okay. Nah. So you <laughs> nah. No. No. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why that wasn't a thing, right? So, unfortunately, the viewers can't see this, but see this bottle right here? Right, you oh. see, you see how big this bottle is, right? It's like a liter bottle of vodka. It was a bottle of Pinnacle. You have to come back. You can't. Ugh. It was a bottle of Pinnacle, so it's about the same size as this bottle. And you Sponsor was drinking on that? Pinnacle, give us money. We're pro. I drank a We're lot like, of that Pinnacle. That's nasty. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Vodka. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. It's vodka. I was really, really drunk. Oh. If it tastes like something, it's bad. Then that's crazy. All y'all seem real mediocre. Like it don't Whoa, seem like. No, I mean is. not My like. Time was the best time. Like, like y'all don't seem like. Oh, that shit was weird or something. I don't know. Damn. Oh, I don't know. Weird about it. The situation but you was, was super fun. Drunk. <laughs> you no, everything something? leading up to it was fun as fuck though. Yeah. Yeah. I remember everything going up to it. Until like, this was up. The blackout period, and then waking up the next day, is just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I, mean, I remember the actual I'm sorry, fucking that's mediocre. I apologize for you guys. <laughs> what? Mediocre I, I mean, <laughs> there, <laughs> it's not of, really like... But like, there was a lot of screaming, which led to the banging on my door and the nigga being upset. It was a great time. So that means of, you like, just showed up things. and it's just like, oh, you are you showed up like you were freaking Ja or something. Ja Morant and stuff, this first year in the NBA. It's just like, yeah. hey, I'm just good at this. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that is exactly what happened. Tony came in like Ja, rookie of the year, about to get that. <laughs> It was just like one, <laughs> and he was really upset with it. He's like, "So you don't make those noises with me?" I was like, "Oh, this will get." Oh my god, that's yeah. where the conversation started. Yeah, and that's where he started. Crying. <laughs> and so it got real awkward. And I was like, "I don't know. I got to go to work tonight." Don't all girls make those noises? I don't know. I was I like, know. "I really don't know." I, I mean, apparently, apparently, so I can go to work. Apparently, work he tonight. didn't. He I didn't. He like, didn't know words. females made those noises. My only point of reference is like porn at this point. And I thought everyone yeah. made those yeah, noises. That was realistically my only point of reference. Is like, this is how you do this. <laughs> It's like that's the only way. No, no, no. Oh man. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, guy. It's yeah. just like it, at least. I mean, did she say anything about erectile dysfunction or anything like that? No the fuck. Uh, that's good. I, I had none of my business. I didn't ask no questions. I was, oh, uh, I was trying to get them out of my house. Please leave. My mother's gonna be home. No, I was in my own apartment. Oh, you were. Oh, I know where you were then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they wouldn't. It was. She snuck back over. Why did, did you let her back in? Ah, <laughs> so science. <laughs> you ready, Marcus? You got your science ready? I mean, shit. She let me back in. I don't fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm ready though. Good I get it. I got it. You got to strap up. Protection is necessary. Uh, Marcus, what? Female condoms are weird. No, I didn't say you was that. Well, you, you ever had one of those? Though? You fuck somebody with one of those? I've before? never. I've never. Yeah. I've what did never it feel like? It feel like a regular condom? A it condom. feels like just having a looser condom. <laughs> 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 it's a condom that doesn't suck as much. <laughs> well, it's, oh, it sucks more actually. For real? 
Yeah, because it's, it's like, oh, man, you're not really feeling nothing, and it's just plastic. So every once in a while, you bump a wall. <laughs> Ooh, oh, there was a wall. <laughs> Shit. Let me stay to this one detour. Side. <laughs> well, it's just like a little cup ass shit. And then you have kind of like the so issue. Of who the fuck brought the female condom? Isn't the female condom I came like unprepared. a cup thing? Yeah. You know what? Isn't the female condom like a cup? I never had one. I don't it's know. Like, Y'all telling me? <laughs> Y'all mm-hmm. get me hip? Like oh, you mean literally like a like ain't a it like a big cup, like a solo cup bag? Ain't it like yeah, a sandwich baggy? It's like mm-hmm. that it's with like a little ring at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's like yeah, that's so pretty much what it is. Well, you fucking a cup and not. <laughs> 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 My nigga, it's, it's, it's essentially you taking a sandwich bag. Yeah, that's what I'm like. It look like a sandwich bag. Yeah, you it's a, a little bit bag. larger than a sandwich bag. Yeah, but I, so I will see the cup. same effect here, though. So what, but, <laughs> are you but fucking a cup? Is, no. My thing is, you know, because with the condom, at least it's like skin tight on your dick. Uh-huh. So have you, you kind of acci- like trying to get the feel. Have you ever what? accidentally bought something with like... A female condom? No. Well, no, not a <laughs> no, female condom. Nigga. No. There is no. a... Uh, no. There are condoms with like... Ridges? Basically... What? No, not riches. Uh, I forget the name of it. You know what is terrible? Anti stimulant. Hot lubricant. Why would you get anti stimulant condoms? That sounds like it's what it has what a it numbing agent. Do? Makes Why? your dick numb? Be- because that means you won't come as fast. Uh, nigga. Or, <laughs> or, or, or you know what you could do? It's, you could but it only numbs the guys. Or, fast. Or, <laughs> but I didn't know that at the time. No, know what you could do? If you don't want to come as fast, you can just get a cock ring and put it around your dick and your balls. And that's going to keep I feel like that, that sounds like a it doesn't very hurt. painful. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt at all. Trust me. I trust you. It doesn't hurt. We're not going to go into that. It I doesn't trust hurt. You. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> it doesn't hurt at all. And you keep the vibrating car, and then it's lit. Then you're having a great time. Then you're in there. Okay. Yeah. It's like. I mean, you got to find the things that you can do for a guy because girls got like a million toys. Like they got a million fucking accessories for their outfits. <laughs> Shit is trash for Facts. I you mean, just gotta find those, a nice belt. Just think of it as a dick belt. The, the, <laughs> a nice belt I mean, or a nice watch, you know, to accessorize. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like a dick watch. Or I a don't want to share in that fun. <laughs> Those niggas but. accessorizing their penises. That's it's funny. Wild niggas, the cufflinks. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of things that I'm not. Oh, interested. shout out to our hundred fucking followers. Yay! Yeah, shout out. Yeah. If you're on Instagram, follow us. <laughs> hey, give us Instagram. Listen to our podcast, <laughs> right? right. Really? Yeah, yeah follow us. Nice. Are, give us the listen stuff. So. But we can go into science if you have anything. Uh, I mean, I do. Right? <laughs> He's like, I didn't come up. Oh, or we can continue to sell a Pedori episode of me talking about wild shit. Oh, that oh. shit's funny because I had the epiphany about. Uh, I would like to put out cut. there though. Hmm. I. They. Never mind. I don't what? even want to say it anymore. So these snake eels, right? No, you don't <laughs> get the just eels. Yeah, snake eels. That's a dirty name. <laughs> you got a dirty snake name. Eel? I thought this was like, interesting. <laughs> I learned something new about these <laughs> animals. Snake eel? Well, I learned that these <laughs> animals were a thing, and then I learned uh, something interesting about them. <laughs> so. <laughs> I broke it. Yo, this nigga's ad libs be so funny. I just call them ad libs at this point. <laughs> just no, that's just who I, I guess they're immune to me because they've known me. For I don't like know why that should be point. so funny. Y'all would just be sitting up there like, oh this is God. just what Charles has said. I don't care. Like, that I don't shit know just hit me like, See, <laughs> what I the fuck? I don't think they be paying attention because it's just exactly. like, <laughs> <laughs> naked. It's worse. Like, it's just the way you be saying shit. I can just not acknowledge the things that I'm saying. It's just like that shit be hit me like, what the <laughs> fuck? It's so goofy. I don't know. Maybe I'm a giggly person. That shit be making me laugh. If you just chime in and hear your ad libs, like, what the fuck is going on on this side of the couch? But anyway. All right, so these snake eels, right? So, like I said, I learned snake eels were a thing. Um, I'm excited. I'm not. Don't be. Right. They on land or in water? They no, they're both? in water. No, okay. they're just in water. Uh, so uh, the interesting thing I learned about these snake eels, right? So what happens is they'd be out here being snake eels, living their best life, and um, they will get eaten by something. You know that'll happen. <laughs> that'll happen. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they naturally had these bony tails that they use to like dig into their sand and all the whatnot dig holes and when they get eaten they naturally react and try to dig their way out 
So Wait, they so they don't die when they get eaten. No, they, you know, you get eaten whole. Like like oh. most fish, yeah. like fish that say. don't have teeth, when they eat, they just it's like a suction action. So they most things they eat, like gropers and things like that, mm. they just swallow it whole. It's just a. That sounds like a terrible decision. Yeah, cause like all those big fish you see just be floating around and look, don't look like they can catch anything. Manta rays. They filter feed. They just uh. Literally just open their mouth and their mouths like the po- the power of them opening mouths creates a suction that sucks anything that are going after into their mouths. Okay. So I'm excited. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Why? I don't know. Something new. All right. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. so cool. they use these bony tails and they poke their hole. They'll, they'll poke a hole in the stomach of whatever the hell eats them, right? And they'll try to get out and they crawl out mm-hmm. through the stomach hole. But the issue with this is they don't actually get out of the animal. They just get out of the stomach. And the reason we know this happened is they found, like, these niggas just, like, mummified inside a fish that they didn't dug out of and just died in. Do they kill the fish? Like, are they riding? I mean, I feel uh, like sometimes. Like rupture someone's intestinal, like, wall. Wall. Yeah, kind of, like, bleeds out. Yeah, you can't just dig out of a stomach and nothing yeah. be a problem. That's yeah, a very it, spiteful it, it, fish. It, it creates it creates issues. Some How small are they eat. that they're digging out the stomach and it's not breaking out of the body? Right. Kill it. <laughs> Where? This nigga weird. <laughs> Kill it. <laughs> it's more of a matter of principle. <laughs> oh my god. I'm going to stop drinking because now I'm just slap happy. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> that shit is mad funny. Kill it. Okay, so uh, scientists, they up to their... I was about to say bullshit. <laughs> the norm. Um, engineering cells and, you know, getting on to that thing. How are you, CRISPR? Uh, this situation specifically, uh, scientists engineer one protein to fight cancer and uh, regenerate neurons. And um, regenerate neurons is really important. Basically, what this um, protein does is what it will do is either when it is used with uh, cells that either block the transmitters or open up the transmitters to allow cells to either regenerate, uh, either uh yeah regenerate or re i can't think of the word i'm looking for link no 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 no. uh repopulate there we go oh and um like the reason it's used for fighting cancer cells is because it would be something that uh could be used to block the neurons that tell the cancer cells to grow because you know cancer is just <coughs> what happened there uh cancer is just a unchecked uh growth of cells mm-hmm so with this, they could use that to uh, block those neurons that uh, create tumors, and mostly it's more used right now just for lungs and things of that sense. But they're trying to spread it out and uh, use it for all types of cancers, and eventually other things too, to like promote growth and stop growth of certain things and things along those lines. Well, <clears throat> if you can tell a neuron to stop doing something, it's possible that you can tell like the pain receptors to like stop transmitting pain exactly which is makes it a more effective painkiller than most opioids mm-hmm. so it's never gonna happen maybe maybe they won't just do they won't do that or they'll cut it with opioids that could be a thing also boo <laughs> <laughs> you gotta boo. get that addictive element how are they supposed to make money we have we have a brand new virus to deal with right now. Brand eh, spanking new. Because realistically, it's just as bad as the flu, and the flu is still here. We ain't got rid of the flu. We just had to find ways to deal with it. <laughs> and if it sticks around like the flu is, well, there you go. I mean, all oh, they got is money in the bank. We got rid of the Spanish flu. Yeah. Smallpox, kinda, because no. you know, stupid people. I mean, smallpox is still happening. Measles is still happening. Uh, yeah, you're right. Spanish flu was pretty much gone. And Spanish flu could re- realistically just been the flu. I don't think it was specific. <laughs> That's something that we can look like, at. realistically. No, 
That's the Spanish flu. Because they didn't have, they wouldn't have the science, that, they didn't have the level of science we do nowadays to be able to examine the flu itself. No, and we still really have samples of Spanish flu like we have samples of everything. Because, you know, we need to keep these things. Yeah. No, we don't. <clears throat> we don't need to keep them. We no, we don't need to, but we do. We have to know what. Well, what? it's kind of important to know because you need things to compare it to in order to figure out what the heck it actually is. Mm. But. No. Nah. Eh, we could just take pictures and just set it all on fire. Yeah. We could, but they're not going to. Morbid curiosity. Yep. It's the, it's the world of science. <coughs> okay, so... um, Science is some bullshit, always. We've left the world of acid rain. Huh. When were we there? Can we no longer have acid rain? Acid rain hurts. Uh, No... We still have acid rain, but we have something else now along with acid rain because, you know, we people. And we can't stop. Um, so, after collecting rainwater and air samples for the last 14 months, they calculated that over a 1,000 metric tons of micro microplastic particles fall into 11 protected areas in the western U.S. each year. That's about the equivalent of 120 million plastic water bottles. Oh. So, now Earth we have... Giving it back. Now we have microplastic rain because we have enough microplastic <laughs> Damn, in the goddamn oceans that's to be able to deal with these situations. The microplastic is small enough to go through the water system Bring or the water cycle. Back. That is just the earth giving it. It's like, you know what? Here, take these plastic bottles back. Well, we don't want this shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm killing all the fishies. <laughs> also, uh, along with that, now that I'm thinking about it, it's not something I would was planning on talking about it but i'm thinking about rain. it now damn um there's a uh, creature in the ocean i'm gonna call it a creature because it's made up a whole it's like uh made up a whole bunch of smaller creatures that form like a large like microorganism voltron? or a large organism you said what <clears throat> like voltron sure like voltron and um basically what this microorganism does though is it uh, filters through and it eats really carbon rich uh, uh, plankton and microorganisms in that sense. And as it filters through, it creates this uh, mucus bubble. And what this mucus bubble does is it um, collects all that carbon and it holds all that carbon that gets uh, as the byproduct of the creature eating. And also, microplastics are being filtered through this creature eating also and when this uh when it essentially gets rid of this mucus blob it lets it go and starts a new one this thing just like kind of floats down to the bottom of the ocean and it holds everything that was in it so um it's kind of just me talking about the earth doing its old carbon reduction thing on its own because the mucus holds it and the carbon gets stuck and Reabsorb back into the planet. Mm. And across, of course, microplastics too. That's what made me bring it up in the first place. Yay. <clears throat> Amazing. Now we live in a wonderful place. I wonder if people don't want to listen to science. It's, a, it's depressing a lot of the time. And that's another thing. Uh, the thing about <laughs> plastic and why plastic is such trash is plastic never goes away, it just breaks down into smaller, smaller pieces. Yeah. It's like possibly the worst thing we ever created. The earth don't like you niggas. That and styrofoam. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad too. Yeah. <laughs> styrofoam is pretty fucking terrible. We don't like the breakdown. Do you have any good news? Um, No. Not no. really. You got real nihilist. I got something that's interesting. Interesting is not good. <laughs> it's interesting because I like it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cool. It's like it's like one of my uh, biggest dreams ever coming true. So, uh, you said what? <laughs> Cyber brains. No, oh, no, no. That's him. I never asked Marcus if he was into that, but after you get finished with your thing, I want to know. Okay. Uh, suspended animation. Step closer. Suspended animation. Yes. Dang, dang. Yes. Dang, dang, dang. So suspended animation. It's like uh, it's putting you in a state of unconsciousness. In yep. which uh, your whole body uh, slows down. It'd be like hibernating. 
your whole body slows down and everything moves to a crawl <gasps> and you pretty much sleep you ever seen a movie vanilla sky yes it's like that you already knew what it was. I've never seen Vanilla Sky. Okay. Tom Cruise is in it. He like I I know I heard of it. That's one of my I've favorite movies, it. but that's what that reminded me I've of. I've seen so many Tom Cruise movies. He froze himself after he killed well, he don't never mind. Oh. If I never seen it, that's giving it away. But anyway. It's just the intro of compute uh it's really just the intro of Futurama. Yeah. You get frozen in two, you chill for a while, you come back out. Okay. You free, so you just stopping cellular regeneration. Yeah, but in a movie, like his consciousness got to start going around. His subconscious mind start kicking in, and start fucking up his simulation. Well, in this situation, basically, what they've done is they've uh, been poking around in mammal minds, brains, and uh, they think they found a group of cells that uh, pretty much is like a hibernation button. In which, uh, if they get and trigger it, it would be essentially be able to put people into suspended animation, which would, I guess, be somewhat of a form of traveling, <clears throat> and because uh, it would slow your growth down too. Yeah. Um, and your aging, I guess, technically. That's so. Gross. You could go into like a hyperbolic stasis and sleep for a very long time and wake up like a thousand years later or something like that. They're able to get the technology to the point which it also preserve you because being sleep that long, you would also just die over age because it doesn't slow down your age that long. Yeah, they got to stop the cellular growth. <laughs> yeah, and that's where the freezing would come in and all that whatnot. And then you also have to figure out a way of, you know, bringing them back. Cause yeah, always yeah the see, I would only this. do that in short bursts, like. 15 years at a time. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to do it 15 years at a time. I want to go in with enough money, put sit my money inside of the account, let it grow interest, come back and, and just come back and not be po- like, well, I'm not poor, but it's like I'll come back and be. You want to wake up in the money, essentially. Yeah, wake up in money and also like prepared because ultimately what I'm doing this for is so means I can get like an Android body. So means I don't have to die. Dying scares me. I support that. <laughs> Fuck dying. I'm glad you said it. Like a lot of people don't want to say it. Like, no, dying scares me. I'm glad you I said mean, that's the first step. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. That's oh, brilliant. Well, I don't understand how people like I don't understand how dying wouldn't scare you. I don't know. It's the number one thing that tr- triggers existential crisis is me. Mm, nah. I get super introspective and I get to the point like, what happens when I die? Oh, shit. Nope. Yeah, that yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, that's <laughs> the worst place because then you start thinking about non-existence. It's just Bro, like... I'm, I'm so not with not with death being like nothing uh, that I'd rather go to hell. It's like, you know, when I, I start like he- thinking about hedging my bets with religion, it's just like, you know, if I convert it to Judaism, I kind of get... A dog in both That's a races. Good question. Because Christianity <laughs> says I'm still covered, and Judaism says I'm covered. So at that point, I'm kind. I'm playing the odds. Realistically, the way I look at it, if you put a foot <laughs> in any of the three, any of those three religions, you kind of just covered. Why are you not afraid to die? I'm asking you that one. Why are you not? I never asked you that. Like, what? Uh, when did you know? Like, I'm not afraid. And what is it about it you're not afraid of? I don't know. It just doesn't like. <clears throat> okay, so me dying doesn't scare me. Like, just it, because I, I feel like at some point in my life I wanted to die. Yeah. So I accepted it and just moved on from it. That's the way I kind of look at it. So it's like, when it ha- if it happens, it happens. I'm not scared of it coming or it happening. Because in my mind, if it happens, it was meant to happen. Or it was bound along some lines ago, and it was going to happen. So it doesn't, I don't fear it. Now, am I in a rush for it to happen? No. So, I don't, like, yeah, like, it's not a fear, but, like, I don't necessarily. Yeah, like, I made my peace with it, so, like, it doesn't, as long as, (laughs) like, I don't, I don't need it to just happen. But if it does, it does. I can't. It wasn't in my control in the first place. 
I have a question for you, Charles. What? Are you afraid of death or not existing? Not existing. Me too. <laughs> That's what, I don't care, care about dying. Dying doesn't scare me. Like the act of dying, I've visualized that plenty of times. It's the act of what happens after that and not existing that it's like, mm, that's it's, nasty. It's all the logistical. It's for me. It's like this. Even in, inside of my like cyber brain thing, it's just like, all right, well, do I become a copy of myself and I still experience death, or is it like I blip over to the other side and it's like a transitional thing? Because the biggest thing is, I want my consciousness to continue. I just don't want it to cut off. Does what? <laughs> yeah. I just, it's funny to me, like, I'll be seeing this nigga the Ashro all the fucking time. Like, he exists and he's happy with it. I've seen you in my dreams. You exactly like how you is. Our consciousness exists. That's why I'm just like, what do you mean? What are you afraid? I guess, like, what are you afraid of? Like, I also have high that anxiety. shit is strange. Like, huh? I have high anxiety, so it means these things worry me anyway. I know, like, I'm not saying, like, you shouldn't be, <laughs> believe me, but, like, I wish it was a way for you to tell y'all, like, yeah, I'll be fine. I also that feel like shit. Marcus has had, like, out of body experiences. Uh, I also don't worry about not existing either, so. You immortal. Like, yeah, I don't understand. More, but I feel like you've had more experiences with, like, different frequencies i'll say yeah so like we i just very I feel like good way of putting that that giving you more experiences with those probably gives you a more concrete feeling of like your existence oh because like, just... like realistically i don't feel like there's never a point in time in which i won't exist even if after um death there's not anything that we ever conceive as afterlife or anything like that is <laughs> something else crazy, right? Some, something that we did not think of, right? I really hope reincarnation <clears throat> is a thing. Even then? It is, though. Like, I don't know how um, to explain it to y'all. I, I wish I could absolve y'all of this. I kind of look at it like... Uh, I don't know. Regardless, something's going to be left behind of me. I, I don't know. I feel like I'm rates. never really gone. I don't know mm-hmm. how to explain it. That's Android crazy. bodies. Me but too. <laughs> you know, Charles, we were born in the perfect time. We were very, very close, and we're starting to get closer to it. But yeah. I don't know. But it's also one of those things. Maybe once I get older and I establish a legacy and I put, like create a footprint, it's just like, I don't know. It's That ultimate thing is, is, are you scared of dying or are you scared of not being remembered? No, I don't care if you remember me. I want to exist. If I don't exist after this, what was the point of this? What because if do? I don't exist after this, that means that all of my legacy will not exist after they leave too. So that means everything is nihilistic. Let's not go there. Unless you c- either are a deplorable enough person to the yeah. point where your legacy will exist for forever. I mean, or you're you a great enough person to the point where you will always have something. Which... I don't know. If I come up with some type of emerging technology or something like that. Oh. I mean, Aww. like I said, all this stuff's coming within the next like five years. We'll have bionic eyes. And I've from seen there, it's just ready to jump off. And it's so I nice. mean, and it's just like within, it, within that same time frame, Tesla's doing the mind link. So I don't trust Eli Musk. He's I the do. person that's doing it, that's though. My so baby if you're right going to get it, it's going to come from Elon Musk. Oh, that's I'm like bad. saying it's gonna come from Mark Zuckerberg. Nothing good comes from out of there. Yeah. You can't get a cyber brain unless you own a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> that would be ridiculous. <laughs> and you also have to take a flight on the fo- next Falcon Heavy. It's funny. Aw, thank you guys for sharing that. That was beautiful. Oh, it's <laughs> just like, the way. But I'm realistically, open about these things. no, because people don't want to talk about it. Like people just be like, uh, no. And I'm like, I'm glad y'all at least share like. What parts of it y'all was uncomfortable with? So I appreciate that. And not existing is true. Oh, uh, a lot of people aren't as necessarily as reflective as they need to be in order to understand where their where their stance is on a lot of these things. That's true. I agree with that. I've also accepted the fact that I am very small, very, very, very small compared to the rest of the world and the universe. I've what long. You oh, you said you feel well, that way? No, it, like <clears throat> compared to like. 
Just hill. Just compare it to like me standing on a beach mm-hmm. compared to the ocean. You were very small. Yeah. To uh, compared to a lot of things in the world, you are very small. That's <clears throat> true. I've long made my peace with that, just because of the fact that if you really think about it, for a lot to a lot of people, my circle is fairly large, and then it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, you know, a lot of people, and if you really think about it, I don't know half of a percent of the people who live inside of the city. It's very true. It's like my footprint is ultimately very strong, small, unless I really do something that's monumental. So it's just one of those things. Where it's just like, I mean, on the terms of the universe, the footprint is very small. So in the terms of the universe, the footprint is almost not existent. Yeah. Like, in the terms of the universe, like this planet is very small. We are insignificant. Yeah. Insignificant. Uh, and it's also, I read a lot of fantasy things. And in fantasy things, there are a lot of, like, long, long-lived races. So it's one of those things where it's just like, all right, you got this species that lives, like, oh, what's your average, like, what's your middle age? Oh, we're not middle aged until we're a thousand years old. It's just like, what does that even feel like? Yeah. I don't know. To be a thousand. <laughs> to see a century, to see a thousand years go by. To count centuries. It was like and I'm five mm-hmm. centuries old. When you basically <sighs> sneeze and you're or else you basically go into a long pensive state and you get or you go into a depressive state and you're like, Man, I was depressed for the last decade. It was a real bad time for me. Like you're talking about decades like they're months. I mean essentially wild, y'all. I didn't see how I was gonna die, but I seen like my funeral. That happened recently though. Where I saw, like, that's weird. Like, I can't say that, I can tell you the feeling, but I don't know how I died. But I just knew, like, I felt ready to go when my daughter was taken care of. Like, oh, okay, I'll be all right. Like, she has a family and children and shit. I've never experienced anything like that before. So, even, but even before that, I wasn't like, oh, death. But I, now I take death more seriously. I didn't take death serious before. Like, take me in my young, fragile body. Now I take it more serious. Like, oh, I get it. I got shit to do. <laughs> Can't leave before I do that. Oh. But yeah, any more signs? No. Oh. Sounds kind of Can short this week. Oh, okay. We can take a little quick. Uh, the ash over here is worried, man. One second. We'll take a hold on. You don't even understand. I actually am just adorable. I don't have any facial hair. Like, I have no... I have no maturing features to me, except for height. That's what I got. I like your smile, though. Every time I see you, you smiling. I'm like, oh, look at that. Oh, I mean, it's probably the most attractive thing that I have. The <laughs> dimples. The dimples are great. Heart kill. Oh. You're not adorable. I'm adorable. I mean, first things first, I'm glad you're saying I'm not adorable, because, like, another man calling another man adorable is also kind of weird, but it's like, I can accept it because I've known you long enough. Nigga, you cute. What a second, but. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. <laughs> well, like, you can tell another dude is attractive, but you don't have to like. It's like, man, do? that dude's You're probably going to get in my way when I go over there. To uh, to oh, that's funny. Because he's over there like, get in my way. <laughs> Because he's over here, like, moving around like he's Usher or something. <laughs> Which, I don't even understand why people actually thought Usher was attractive. But that was a, that's always a very interesting thing. It's a random observation, Charles. Have you ever actually seen people that other people thought were attractive and you just don't get it? Cause I, yeah, Rihanna. I don't understand. <laughs> I think she's cute, but I don't know about this whole... I don't understand. It's not even necessarily the way Rihanna looks. It's more about r- the way Rihanna carries herself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because, like, honestly, I don't think Rihanna looks that hot. It's like, in terms of that, she's running around looking like men talk to mind taker in terms of, like, <laughs> forehead action. But... <laughs> <laughs> But, Are we recording? Yeah. This is sick. <laughs> like, don't laugh. At but me. in terms of the way Rihanna that. carries herself, it's just like oh, laughing this shit. Oh my god! 
you can just look at me and just be like, all right, all right, all right. Men talk to mind taker. That's super rude. Super rude. <laughs> Somebody's gonna look up what men talk to mind taker looks like. All right. <laughs> So, what I want to talk about is uh, reading the room. What? Reading the room. <laughs> Social Reading skills. the, huh? Reading the room. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you know, just a general social skill. And why it seems like celebrities don't have it. <laughs> you know they could just shut the fuck up, but they don't. Oh. So, so let's talk about Terry Crews. I was about to say, I feel oh like he's goodness. about to bring up Terry it's, Crews. E- I was about to say, it's either that or Lana Del Rey. <laughs> There's yeah, only so two. Terry me- Crews tweeted saying that defeating white supremacy with only black people creates black supremacy and doesn't promote equality. Oh, Terry Crews. There are so many things I love about Wait, Terry. say that again? It doesn't defeating really make sense. white supremacy. Uh huh. Only black people creates black supremacy and doesn't create equality. He thinks of it as we're kind of shooting past them if we become like, if we propel ourselves to a certain degree, same as we propel ourselves past like the other races, thus creating, you black, <laughs> thus creating black supremacy. But oh, it doesn't that. really make sense. And you know. I looked into more math things last week as just kind of like, man, we only like 13% of the population. Ah. <laughs> uh, ah. Uh, Marcus is still struggling. Black supremacy, man. Logically high is over here, like. That, that, yeah, that made supremacy. my head hurt. <laughs> His head is hurting. Uh, no, you're not down for this black supremacy. <laughs> His head is over here. Just laugh. No. <laughs> no, it did though. Like, him, oh, you, you're on the microphone. Ash, it's on the mic. <laughs> you're hitting the mic. She's broken. I'm so sorry. I apologize, guys. <laughs> oh yeah. So, what do y'all think about that? No, for real, I literally it's just misguided. I can breathe. <sighs> I'm thinking about it. It's crazy. But, no one's perfect. Terry Crews is kind of trash. Eh. I he threw it. Gabrielle Union under the bus. Did he? Yeah. For what? Um, she came that out to say that uh, there was a lot of like racial jokes and like sexism and shit like that on uh, what show was she uh, judge on? Uh, was it the like voice? Some the Voice? Show? There we oh, go. There we go. And so she left and they're suing them. And Terry Crews came out and was like, nah, none of that happened. I mean. And then people were like, that or also on the show came out and was like, mm, no, we also experienced this. If we're going to talk about it. And then he came back out and like apologized. So he's done this a lot. Then he, you know, when um, everybody, oh, to black women, when they were defending him about talking about how he was sexually assaulted and all of us men made fun of him and black women chastised us for making fun of him you know what he did he came back around and said man i don't know what the women is talking about i understand why y'all was making jokes on me i'd make jokes too nigga you can't shit on every group that defends you oh except for white people (laughs) i mean he hasn't shit on white people at all uh Oh, that's such a middle of the road after Charles. I don't know what that means. Well, in terms of middle of the road, it's just like I don't know. More the re- the things that I like about Carrie Cruz is more of his approach to actual child rearing. But outside of that, in terms of social political issues, for the most part, honestly, I don't listen to a lot of celebrities when it to comes child to child rearing. Uh, Max, you want to raise your child <laughs> like him? He actually enjoys and tries to cooperate and uh do the thing do things with his child that his child enjoys and he tries to actually spend time with his child by doing that so, so being i can an understanding and compassionate parent 
Yeah. Which <laughs> I feel like that's a, a basic parenting skill. I don't feel like that's a Terry Crews. You special. would think that hey, that Ash, is a pa- Ash, basic yeah. parenting do skill. You do things that your daughter likes and try to like go in those general directions. Yeah. You get that from Terry Crews? No. Nah. Okay. <laughs> well, no. It's more so just one of those things where I understand this, what Charles is trying to say. But it's like, do all parents do that? No. No. It's like, do most parents do but, that? Should parents do that? Should that be a basic thing that parents are doing? Yeah. I don't think you should get married for basic things you should be doing just because the field isn't doing them. I guess it's my thing. Uh-huh. Just because everybody else is subpar, it doesn't mean I'm going <laughs> to congratulate you because you got a C. I think Charles' point is that it's like, why are we taking parental advice from celebrities no, or political or anything? Advice. No, he That's said he's true. taking He said you well, are. Well, no, the thing yeah, that he I, that he the thing that I like that he does it. is that. Oh, okay. But outside of that, there's nothing... I mean, yeah, I knew that point ridic- was coming up. <laughs> but my thing maybe is, ridiculous pecs take- or something like that. I don't know. But in terms of what Terry Crews actually that? is adds to things is like there's really nothing in particular. He's never really proved himself to be particularly educated about a lot of these things. I guess my thing isn't really about Terry Crews and more so about why do they keep talking and not shutting the fuck up? Oh. You could be quiet. Like they all could be just rich and safe in their houses and not say Because racism is profitable. Y'all ain't cut on yet. Oh, uh, L'Oreal started pitching in on Black Lives Matter. Like, oh, you're kind of trying to profit about that. Like, now being a social justice warrior is, like, the thing that's trendy. Oh, it was real interesting. Uh, I mean, but he's not even it. trying to. Well, I guess in the Terry Crews case, he's not trying to be a social justice warrior. It's but like, I'll say, like, I understand where he's coming from. I don't believe that black supremacy don't exist, number one. I think we supreme in a lot of things. I think that a lot of people just don't want to see how they supreme in. But... No, he I was think, saying that was a bad thing. I'm just saying my opinion. I'm going to get to what he was saying in a second. I, mean, I thought you said that I agree with him. So that's why I was... No. You said that thing black supremacy. I think what he's trying to say is y'all using the same tactics to defeat something that's already established. And how is that going to work? Like how... Like if the nerd becomes the bully, how is he really rectifying what's going on in him that he was... Or the, the bully E. I don't even say it's nerds. I'm not even going to put that one there. But how is the bully er and the bully E becomes becomes the bully? How did he really absolve himself of anything? How did he learn and grow from that? Is what I think he was trying to say. And it came out like what he said. That, so I would ask I would I think that's what that, he's trying to say. I, that, I mean I like what you said. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you kinda gotta people don't ever say what no one ever it's not a woman thing i don't think men and women don't ever say you got to really look behind what they're saying and that's what keeps you from being non-reactive i mean i i mean i guess but he defended that like saying but he don't know what he's saying he just like typing it out maybe he's being reactionary i understand what he was trying to say but the rest of the world doesn't understand i guess my thing is if you say something we respond to be like oh this is what we take it as. Mm-hmm. And your response is to be like, yeah, that's what I mean. And like, be staunchly defensive. Even if it's reactionary, when do we get to take you at your word and stop trying to look for a positive spin for it? Well, mm-hmm. one, this is the reason why I always say Twitter is not an actual good medium to have any real conversation because. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. it's not at all. So not at it's all. like oh. saying these things on Twitter. Wow. It's a nice token of like support or whatever. It's never really an adequate way of doing this. So it's like saying that and not being able to add the necessary nuance, which you can't really do on Twitter without doing like a multi thread tweet or a multi tweet thread. It's like, nah, man, it's just not the place you should be saying really much of anything because outside of, hey, listen to our podcast or because like Twitter is also in this really weird space where it is kind of like a communication thing, but it's also a promotional thing. And it really doesn't have a particular lane. Twitter but, is like the world's water cooler. Yeah. Yeah. But even in a water, like a water cooler is a place for like general conversation. Yeah, you're not you about to bring up racism at the water cooler. That's like, <laughs> it's not true. You have all kinds of wild. Well, I mean, Ugh. I'm more so, so not even talking about the racism. I have a it's like a mad. Go ahead. Um, is that really like? Is there any truth in that statement though? 
Like, is that not something that... I think your statement is completely false. Like, I mean, one... We're not trying to defeat it only with black people. Yeah. Like, we're always talking about how we need allies and we need others to be a part of the movement to actually progress. I mean, it's But what we say don't match the behavior, though. I don't like, know if that's true. I don't think so. Like, I think when every time I see, like... Yeah, we need to, like, unify with cops. Niggas just be like, what? Get the fuck out of here. What the fuck are you talking about? Or, like, you talking about them AFDs? I don't know what it is. But, like, let's just say a little, just an example. Like, if somebody posts a picture where, like, like a black dude is hugging a cop, it's, like, almost like you can't do that. And I don't understand why you wouldn't want to do that. I mean, I guess it feels token-esque at this moment. Like, I guess it seems like the same way you view rides. Like, well, what's the point? What's the end goal? Yeah, you hugged them, but, like, where does that lead? Like, what are you doing? And so I guess mm-hmm. I look at it the same way as that. It's like, well, what did I resolve? But the idea of it, it, not just taking the picture, but the idea of it. What's the wrong with the idea of, like, unifying with cops being like, yeah, maybe this needs to be, I feel like it should the be stomped idea, out. And yeah. I'm coming together with you to say, well, how can we work together? Which is why I was like, you niggas ain't got a war mentality because if someone's saying, like, hey, I'm trying to unify with you and you keep saying, no, because whatever, you're fucking, all of you are bad. Like, wait a minute. All of us are not bad. We're trying to get to a common ground here. Well, that's why I'm like, what? I mean, but, but they don't really be trying to get to a common ground. That's not How? really a oh, thing. Oh, I guess, like, just taking a picture is not going to change anything. Oh. But the idea of it, how it would work not working with cops not help, I guess is well, what I'm trying to ask. One of those, it's out of our particular situation. I look at it as the unification is... If you are going to be in unison with us, you got to sell out the dudes who are considered to be bad inside your own ranks. And that's kind of the problem that we have with cops right now. It's not the fact that we believe every single cop is going to run out there beating people. It's the fact that you won't sell or, like, not even sell the river. You will not hold yourselves to a high enough standard and look at the cops who are doing that and hold them accountable. And because you're not holding your own people accountable, thus we have a problem with it. We don't see it until it's, like broadcast on the news or somebody said like this was bad oh I, so i guess how like how are you how are they supposed to stamp it out until it happens oh i mean i don't think that's true that we don't see it, it until this is bad like i personally know people who had their grandparents yanked out of their house it's and battery as poured on them by the police mm-hmm. it's not and about us it's about the other cops calling it out no one else calling it out to saying anything so i don't it was like that blue if wall or whatever. You're, yeah, called. blue wall of silence. Yeah. If you're a bystander to like crazy shit that's happening and unwilling to say shit, how can I really trust you to be on my side? Mm-hmm. You too afraid to be a war. You too afraid to stand in the line of fire with me. You afraid for yourself and your own self interest. Mm-hmm. Which I, I that's get. cool. I respect that, but I also can't count on you. So a photo op is nice. Y'all taking all these pictures and kneeling and hugging riders and shit like that that's cool but where's the work after that just like in the riding where's the work after that so i can get it on both points but there needs to be some type of like progress mm-hmm. outside of a photo op and there's never really okay. any evidence past that point of them holding themselves accountable they say oh we'll do better we'll do this we'll do what and it never whatever. changes and then they never actually do better <clears throat> so i understand where the people who are saying no unity is set are coming from but i can also say that they, if there are people who are trying to bridge that gap and actually operate on good faith we should actually deal with those people and actually run out the like the shitty cops oh yeah no i mean you definitely got to take people by good faith because if you just be like nah to everybody then you're gonna be on the island by yourself and that's not where you want to be either so i definitely get that you got to like include some people into the fight and extend that brand to like well I don't really know, but I'm going to have to trust you and find out. But So, like, Ash, you are correct. At some point, you've got to look at it and be like, hey, you know, if you're really trying to help me mm-hmm. and you're really trying to actually do something with me and you actually include them and you bring them in and they're actually helpful, like, yeah, eventually you got to do those things because ultimately, like I said earlier, we're like 13% of the populace. Like, it's one of those things where outside of our own spirit, we kind of like, that's kind of the fallacy of tied to Terry Crews' statement. It was like, like, if we do it by ourselves, like, we've been trying to do it by ourselves this entire time, and it hasn't really functioned. So I don't think we really, it's not that we can't, it's just gonna take such a long time to the point where like, your statement 
it doesn't really hold any water because you're attacking a it's a straw man fallacy you're beating up something that's not really even a thing you're attacking a straw man and that's kind of where I feel like Terry Crews is going on top of that Terry Crews is just within a bubble in which his money gets him away from a lot of issues that the average black person has to deal with so a lot of statements he created and used even if he and on top of that even if he did come from like nothing or no money at all after a while of sending money you kind of just you know um you lose yourself yeah you lose yourself some people lose themselves and the diff- I would say the difference for us is it's just like as our community it's kind of our responsibility to call him out the problem is that there are probably going to be people who clout. No, nah, I mean, what happened is, like, the dude from Everybody Hates Chris, the dude that played his son, he reached out to him and was, like, basically in, like, a respectful way, like, hey, I think that we should have more dialogue about this, and this isn't really the message that you want to put out there. I'm so tired of niggas talking. All we do is talk. All talk. We need to talk. Like, shut I mean, to each other. Up. I don't know, like, I, I'm tired. You other niggas just want to talk, 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 talk. So and y'all talk to talk. <laughs> I mean, what are we... I'm I not mean, saying that he shouldn't talk to him, but a lot of times it's like, oh, man, one all this fucking it's talking. It's like, within our own community, I feel like that's the way we evaluate things. Like, I mean, it's talking. not like we can just go to his house with batons and beat him up. No, I wouldn't suggest that, but it's a lot of talking. Or just man. get just it, or quote unquote, he's not allowed to be at the barbecue, but... <laughs> Hmm. I don't know. Y'all figure it out, right? I don't know. It'll get figured out, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's out. not that same vein. Lana Del Rey was sitting. Oh, as this all like this entire thing was going down, she pointed out like the entire Billboard's like top artists. And at that point in time, it was I do believe it was Doja Cat, uh, Nicki Minaj. Cardi B and Beyonce. No. Fuck Nicki Minaj. Not Nicki Minaj. Ooh. I'm sorry. It well no, not Cardi B. It was Megan Stallion. There we go. And she was she said something about them using their bodies to like make money, yada yada yada. And it was just kinda like and she kinda in that same vein, every single time someone came at her and told her like, yo, you should be quiet, she did something else. She went from like I'm gonna send out this. I'm gonna send out this tweet. To I'm gonna like make multiple threads of this tweet. To I'm gonna make a video reinforcing what I said. Well, see, I feel like Lana had a good point. She just didn't know how to execute properly. What was her? Like, I mean, her her I, point of if she hadn't used Beyonce and Rihanna as like caricatures. Yeah, I would say Beyonce and Rihanna don't fall in that category. She could have said that. There is a space for women that are I can't say over sexualized, but they use their sexuality to make money as a core theme of their music. And um, so she wants there to be a space for women who are more fragile and dainty, I guess, in music. Well, like she sings about like her dude like being abusive and like still going back to him and like or like wanting a man to like lead her and just different like dainty yeah. ultra feminist no well, not even feminist things just First. ultra feminine things well so she says there's nothing inside of the uh this new feminist movement that allows for that perception of women, the women that actually enjoy the man being the dominant person and things like that. The feminist movement speaks to just as ultra you niggas got to individuality and niggas got to kind of I mean, sit in their own little. little <coughs> and that kind of. So at it, that point, it's kind of right, but the way that she went about it was wrong. And that kind of against, uh, like, being a feminist. She's not a feminist. She says that. No, that no, no, no. Like, how are you asking for a space? What she say? Within because fem- feminist feminism is supposed to be inclusive for all women. I understand. So, that. but then no. So then I should have a space. If I want to be led by a man, that should still be a part of feminism. 
if but it's, it's not though. But, but that's that's well, against the core idea of feminism. No, feminism is supposed to be inclusive to all women. It is technically okay. I understand that, but <laughs> feminism also <laughs> is about the empowerment of women and them being able to do things but on their own without a man. Her empowerment is one. No, it's about you being self empowered. Yeah. But if you being self empowered, is I want to make the decision to let this nigga tell me what to do. Yeah. Am I, am I not? A, I don't have the agency to do that, so that's not feminism. I'm not empowered to do that. Yeah, I guess. If that's what you I'm want to do, I'm pretty sure if feminists would to... disagree with you. See, they do. They do, and that's her issue. Well, see, that's the weird thing. Because also, Lana Del Rey has like a giant chip on her shoulder because her very, her original. I mean, I don't know what to tell her. Very well. <laughs> it sounds like a personal <laughs> problem like at that point. She, like, I'm not saying that. That's her uh, issue. People I, mean, not, I get it. She but... did not like that. Because I'm like sorry. her first albums were Pitchfork and all those other places, they looked at them and they were like, "Yeah, I don't know what she's talking about." She her, her intro line on one of these tracks where her pussy tastes like Pepsi Cola. Man, okay. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> what are we here for? Who else Pepsi Cola? <laughs> and it's just like, why does she call it Pepsi Cola? Because that was the intro line, do. and that was like one of the first lo- like tracks I ever heard from her, and it was just like. I, as a reviewer and as a person who looks at like these types of music, I could look at that and be like, "Yo, uh, what is this?" <laughs> it's just like I feel like that's a reasonable take to have, and it's just like, but she hasn't. It never really feels like she got over that. But the thing about Lana Del Rey is she's gonna be able to tour off of this for the rest of her life, like Bruce Stink, Spring Singing, and the rest of those dudes are. It's a lot of these like. A lot of the older, like the artists who aren't like black or minorities, like mm-hmm. once their time is passed, their time is passed. Like the only kid. Well, I like, don't think that's so much so true now. We're we're finally seeing hip hop get to a stage where it's actually old. Like, well, I was gonna say like, except for like juvenile and guys like that, to the point where they can tour off of their hits for like. Forever. But I mean, only the greats get to tour off their hits in any genre. But mm-hmm. like, oh, that's true. Oh. But I don't know if I would describe Lana Del Rey as one of the greats. She's a pop star, great. I mean, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's not that same thing. It's just like there are better results. That there are better things that you like. Heck, if you diversified that a bit, and you just said like, "Hey, people like Britney Spears and Beyonce," and like you could have just named off a bunch of general pop stars. It's just been the. Re- the result would have been a lot better because there are are Caucasian females that have done the same thing, but you just chose to name off all the black people. That's a part of that skill of reading said room. Yep. That people don't seem to have. I actually look like you have something to say. Do I? I was about to be like, yeah, feminism really don't be including those ladies that definitely want that type of relationship where like, oh, it's okay. I'm cool with my man leading me because I hear like the idea of feminism is supposed to be all of us are inclusive, but the reality of it is, is not like the type of person that I am. It's a very niche. It's now it's niche because at one point it'd be the norm, but now it's very niche. And if you tell like like a hardcore feminist, like uh, oh, you know, I'm kind of not really into that whole that what you're into, they'll be like, why not? You're impressed. Like, but I don't feel that way. But you need to get out the house and have room. No, I'm contending what I'm doing here. Like, I would like to go in this direction. Like I said, the idea of it sounds amazing. But the reality of it is, them niggas will eat their own fucking children if they had to just prove a point of equality. Oh, yeah. So, Mm -hmm. I understand Lana's positioning. Yeah, that's why I'm not mad at, like, what she wanted to say. She just did not convey it correctly. They never do. And if you're not, like, conscious of what you... I'm not saying that you wouldn't make mistakes, but them celebrities just... they Maybe they just be in their car and just be like, blah, 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 blah. I don't know how that shit works, but... Oh, they're all just if not it may be, to deal with it. There's if like, it maybe just took five extra minutes to be like, how am I going to present this to the world so I can be very clear and concise, even if it take you a couple of tweets to say what you're gonna say then yeah but we put too much clout on what celebrities have to say like i don't give a fuck about what you think about this nor that all right when is your next album coming out bro <laughs> like when are you coming out with your next movie 
them niggas is persona. So I can't buy into a fake part of yourself. Like, I don't know who the fuck Lana Del Rey is. Her, what, her, what is her real name? I don't know who she really is behind closed doors. So I don't give a fuck what you got to say politically or otherwise. Like, bitch, if you don't make this album, <laughs> chop, chop. Like, I don't give a fuck what you got to say. And that's where I think we go wrong as a fucking weirdo ass nation. Gives a fuck what these celebrities got to say. They got a job to entertain your ass, not to fill your head with like, that's why I say like racism now is very trendy or just, oh, I have something to say. <sighs> you forgot your job, didn't you? Entertain. Go back to doing that. You were real good at that. Not saying that they opinions ain't even valid, but why do I, why do you care so much about what a celebrity got to say politically or otherwise? Oh, fuck rich. them. <laughs> like, they not my God. I don't worship them. They don't run my life. They not in my life. The fuck you got to say that's so important. So, you know, she can have her opinions about feminism or whatever the fuck. I don't know. Bitch, make this album. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people Top. have cultish followings nowadays to the point where mm, yeah, know, everything that, that the person that they follow says is law. Because the thing about it was, even when they... There were people who followed Lana Del Rey and they could not see any fault in what she said. Mm-hmm. Even though they were, they were taking context out of it, where she, they were like reading further into it than really needed to be read. So it's just kind of like. And that's going to come with the territory, whether Twitter was alive or not. Like <laughs> before Twitter, you know, a lot of these artists had a lot of anonymity where they could be mysterious and, you know, they would come out with Rolling Stone and say something and whatever. But now it's like the fucking endless mirage of constantly talking and this shit is exhausting. A lot of the celebrities that we still like don't actually have these methods of actually conveying with people. Mm -hmm. They just don't. Yeah. Most of the time. And the ego of these motherfuckers, like, you just want somebody to say, yeah, you're right. Like, I get it. That's the whole premise of, like, Facebook and Instagram. Give me them dopamine hits, baby. Tell me I'm right. I understand that as well. But sometimes you're not right. <laughs> or you might be right, but it don't mean... What was that? What are you saying? SWAT? Samuel Jackson says some shit. Sometimes the right thing to do ain't always the right thing to do. Sometimes you just gotta shut the fuck up. <laughs> just Across the board. Right doesn't mean you're not an asshole. Yeah, like you might be right, but sometimes is that like the right thing to say at the right time or... Whatever, like, or do the world need to know your right opinion? What do you need to be right for? What do you win from being right? Like, come on now. Get over that bullshit. But that's never going to end, so. You know. Now it's Ash's turn. It's your segment. Is it? Yeah. That's not fair. How is that not fair? I don't know. I just like to be a bypass. Like, damn, y'all are crazy. (laughs) <laughs> like I'm, like right. I'm not contributing to the whole show, y'all. Wow. Um, no, it's. Um, we're gonna your, bring up your segment. It sure is. We're gonna bring up the M word, guys. What is it? M monogamy. Whoa. Marriage. Ding ding ding. <laughs> monogamy. Like my homie well, got it right. Well, I guess they kind of walk hand in hand. Round table. If y'all feel like it's right or wrong. And then I'm going to go in an article. Because all I ever hear about is how niggas think that shit is trash. But I want to see how y'all feel. Yeah. Go ahead, everybody. Explain yourselves. How do how do you guys... I don't really care for marriage? it. No, why not? I don't feel like it's necessary. Oh, wait. Marriage 101. Do I got to start over? No. How do you guys feel about marriage? We all love it. I mean, I'm very much a right person type of dude, so it's like, if I think I'm going to be willing to spend the rest of my life with you, then, you know, why not? If we're just going to be the... Uh-oh. I don't... I was trying to move, actually move it that way. The thing, I, the way I look at marriage is just more of the same thing. I don't expect there to be an exponential change in our relationship because we got married. I don't think there's going to be some, like, some type of psychic connection or anything like that. I just kind of think we are married now. We are going to be doing the same thing that we were doing before. It, like, if we, especially if we were living together. If we weren't living together, we got to find some type of balance in that. But outside of that, it's just like, what really changes? You get some legal papers that say you can file your taxes together. 
you guys had a ceremony in front of whatever, whomever you wanted to have that in front of. But I don't think the dynamic of a relationship really should change because if it does, that means that that means that entire dating and relationship pr- period prior to that wasn't really it wasn't an accurate trial period. So it's like because like if your goal is to get married, every your relationship up to the point where you get married is kind of like a trial period. And if you change things prior after that, then what's the point unless stuff just gets better it's just like oh because we're married now you know like we get to relax inside of these certain capacities and we don't have to be worry about as, things as much or we don't have to like worry about going out like making sure we go out and like date or double dates and all that other shit but from my understanding in those things not doing those things can also be just as detrimental so shit really shouldn't change that much you should just keep doing your thing if you are married, I guess that's cool. cool what about you, Tony? Um, I don't care. You are indifferent upon the marriages? Mm, yeah. So that means you can just do it or not do it? Yeah. I mean, I feel like you, in the sense that I don't really think that it changes anything. I feel like you should be doing all the things that you would be doing inside of a marriage already because if you're not then how do you even get to that point like how do you get to the point of the other person wanting to have you as a wife if you're like no all these things are wife privileges well how do I know that those things are gonna like be realities if they're not a reality right now I can't just be like well you said that these are gonna be the, the things that are kind of come to fruition once we get married and then just hope that that's the, the case and oh. I need there to be some type of like pathway and real like showing like alright we're doing these things we're in them hmm. I don't know I always see this thing on Facebook about from whatever judge from divorce court and she said something about she wouldn't cook for her husband until after they got married it's just like, that feels like such an arbitrary thing to not do. It's like, I won't cook a meal for him. He he would always cook the meals or we would go out to eat or something like that. It's just like, that's something that you only get once we're married. It's just like, that's, I don't feel like that's a necessarily, it's like, we're not going to start being financially savvier because everyone knows cooking is more, like cooking for yourself is cheaper than going out to eat. So it's like we're not going to start saving money when we're possibly about to go out and do this, commit a bunch of money to this thing that costs a lot, which is a wedding. And nope. nope. So we're not going to save this stuff and you're, so, because you don't want to cook for me? Yep. Like, it seems so arbitrary. Yeah, it's just, just, I don't know, it just seems like if you're waiting for marriage, then you're not realistically waiting for me. You're waiting for an event to happen. And that's cool, but if you want a placeholder, then you should go find someone that wants to be that. Mm. I want to be considered inside of the relationship, and I suppose, like, be like, all right, these, I know that you're doing these things, and so that's why I want to marry you. Mm-hmm. Not that, oh, I think you're going to be doing these things. So that's why I want to marry you. What do you think, Jones? Well... Like I previously said, I don't really care for it. it. Doesn't have really any meaning to me. I imagine if I ever ended up married, it's because who I was with wanted to be married. And I understand that some people it's like a event, like you said, it's a milestone, uh, things along those lines. So I can understand that's something you want to do, but to me, it's not anything necessary for me. We don't have to be married. It doesn't mean anything for us to be married. Uh, makes you feel better, sure, but like, it's a big ass party. It doesn't mean anything to me, at least. Cool. It's just a title, I guess. Yeah, so three of us. All right, take it away, DJ Ash. Great. So on this website called the Art of Manliness, he's gonna prove his case of why people should get married. If you guys are any confused about that. And his article, he says, Lately marriage has gotten a bad rap. It seems like many people these days feel like 
feel marriage is some archaic arrangement that holds people back from realizing their full potential. Even if people aren't particularly anti-marriage, they will avoid getting hitched for as long as they can. Many men delay marriage because they believe that dating and cohabitating after all, offer all the benefits, particularly sex, of marriage without the commitment and responsibility. They are fooling themselves. Nearly all of the true advantages of marriage, yes, even sex, apply only to actual married couples, not those couples living together, and certainly not to those simply dating. Here at The Art of Manliness, we've been... We haven't been shot about the fact that we're big proponents of marriage. We should, certainly don't advocate that men rush into marriage, whether they're ready or not. They would be seriously un- That would be seriously unwise. But once you find your true love and you're sure she's the one, there's no reason to delay your, your nuptials. Why? Marriage offers truly significant benefits that could be not found outside of it. Here are six reasons that they rush. So if y'all don't particularly care, do y'all think it's any benefits to doing it? Or benefits to not doing it? <laughs> I mean, depending on how you look at it, I guess. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like, like, to marriage for a lot of people, at least in my mind, the way I see it, it's like a dedication or like a, um, like a promise or something like that to that other person. Yeah. So, like, if that's how you feel, that's cool. I ain't got nothing against that. But in my mind, it's like, why Why do I need this to happen for me to be that dedicated to you or loyal to you or anything along those lines? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's the thing. It's not like marriage forces you to be a particular thing at all. It doesn't force you to be loyal. It doesn't. It, it gives, like, possible legal liability for these things. But I'm in... <laughs> It's like I am an inherently like in a relationship I'm an inherently loyal person, so it was like I'm not gonna run out cheating on people anyway. So like regardless, it doesn't really change too much for me. Do I see myself getting married eventually? Yeah. Because eventually there's gonna be somebody I wanna spend the rest of my life with and I feel like that's what marriage is more so saying, like, hey, you know, I'm done with there's nobody else that I want to do this with besides you. So let's do this permanently. So you do want to get married? I mean, the concept of it is, yes. yeah, more than likely I see myself getting married at some point, but my reasoning behind getting married is like, for some reason people treat it like it's, it is this ward that will stop people from like, that will stop him from like cheating on me and it's not that it is this agreement or me just saying hey I want to spend the rest of my life with you and isn't I can that, say isn't that kind of like saying the same thing though no? what did you say isn't that kind of like saying the same thing though no? yeah I mean it's quite essentially the same thing to me I can tell that to him. but for some people it's it has to be like bonded in some type of way it's one of it's weird but you want it to be bonded too I can be, I can honestly just be bonded and say, "Hey, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. If we want to get married, that's fine. If not, so on and so forth. That's cool." But like, also, I kind of want to have a giant party and celebrate us. That's kind of also the way I view a wedding. It's like this is a celebration of us. I mean, but you could have that without the the first part. True. But I feel like it would be a lot more condescending that way. Or not condescending, just a lot more self-centered. I mean, I think weddings are kind of self-centered as it is, but if you call people up and say, hey guys, what? We're just going to have a party to celebrate us. And Yo, you know what? I think what? weddings are You're strange invited. as fuck. I think weddings is strange as fuck. Like, <laughs> if I put it that way. Just I having a photographer so. like right there catching your happy moments, that shit freaks me out. Like I'm supposed to pretend like... <laughs> I'm supposed to pose with you. That shit is so weird to me. I do not understand. I mean, uh, to be honest, the original so basis for marriage is I'm not based on anything that has to do with, like, love or anything like that. Yeah, wedding really ain't got shit to do with love. Yeah. I agree with that part. Wedding, like, weddings and marriage is not based in love or soulmates or anything. You want to draw along those yeah. lines. But we can all agree on that one. Yeah, weddings wedding is just one big dumbass party. Financial and po- finances and power. And like, I love parties. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like 
<laughs> so maybe my ap- not apprehensive to getting your wedding is just like you just want to have a big ass party, don't you? A little a bit, big fucking ass party to celebrate. A little self sit, little self centered, just a little bit. Hey guys, come look at me, look, party. come look at me and my very hot girl or now hot wife, mm-hmm. and we're like, about to all get reason, drunk. The only reason you want to get married is like I want to have this party. <laughs> Did not look like a douchebag by having. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, because you look like the asshole if you're saying I'm a douchebag for having a wedding. Like, oh, look at you. You just hate, you're just a hater. You're just hate, hating on him because he's happy. And you're just legitimately sitting there like, no, I have physical documentation. Like, they're listen to this podcast. He just wants to have a party. Like, oh, you better not say that. See, I particularly don't see any, like, for real benefits. You're saying, like, I should already see those benefits before I'd be like, well, Here's the contract. What you trying to do? Oh, it's not really yeah. a contract. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it's a contract. It is. No, it no, is. It, 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 it is, is a, a legal binding contract that ties you financially and morally to another person. Morally? Yes. Can you really actually be tied, legally be tied to someone morally? Yeah. Well, or are you more you, talking about <laughs> the social right. contract than if the morality? If you cheat on them and they divorce you, they can take half your shit. Because mm-hmm. you cheated on them, so that is a moral judgment. That because that is not le- it's not illegal because it's been not married, and you cheat on your girlfriend, she doesn't get to take half of shit. So it's not a legal thing. Okay. Yeah. So that's a moral judgment. I I can get what you're saying on that one, but it's also one of those things. If we're splitting it fifty fifty, I don't know if the way I envision the girl if I that I were to marry, I don't. If we were to take fifty fifty, it would be more like an even split. Because one, I don't ever think I ever just want a housewife. It's not really my stick. It's like, if that's really what you want to do, all right. If I really love you, that's fine. But it's one of those things where it's just like, I don't, I've never been attracted to the housewife type. But maybe I'm just a... But even if it's... 50-50 50-50 and that let's say she gets more than that. She gets it all because you cheated. Like in California, you, you can't cheat. Oh. Yeah. And then they, well, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So if you get married in California and you cheat, they can take your shit. Does it matter where you, it's more so where you get married than yes. where you actually live? Yes. Individual state laws? Yeah, because your license is from there. Hmm. It's interesting. You're, you're but also just don't plan on rules. cheating symptoms. It's I not mean, really an issue for me. But there's probably some poor bastard who did. I mean, man. it's not about that. It's just Ooh, man. About, like the judgment of like... Kobe was probably morality. real happy when all that ha- shit happened. Because that means he could have ran them all up in his pockets. Yeah. Just took it all. Yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah. we get the money that you dollars. get. $81 million. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. All the companies, they're just going to take it. Oh yeah, oh. but that's also how K-Fed took Britney Spears' money. Yep, man, that's all. Her paying him palimony is always the int- most interesting thing ever. Yeah, yeah see, but in California they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> like you're a piece of shit and you pay. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Man, yeah. I wonder how many people just got put out of their house. How many people just get put out of their houses because of that? It's just like, oh, well, you cheated. Get the fuck out. Do I get to take my clothes? You want to get your clothes. That's theirs, too. I don't have to see exactly. <laughs> just so like. That's, that's my only thing. It's like, so you making uh, legal and financial judgments and uh, decisions for me based off of a moral decision I made. That's not how the law is supposed to work. Uh, I... It's I get I'm a weirdo and I don't ever see it backfiring on me. I don't see it backfiring, but it's just the <laughs> fact that that's just not how it's supposed to work. So you're just sitting there rubbing your chin. It's just like I don't want my moral. I don't want like my what, moral. Then what other moral things are you going to stretch and be like? Oh well, you don't like the precedents. Because yeah, what if you said it as oh he was emotionally, emotionally. abusive. And that will not have some moral ground. And how can you prove that? 
And so that there means, are that ways is, depending that, upon if they have counseling and things of that yeah, nature. But that starts to hedge the, the line, and I'm not with hedging the line. Yeah, it's not on something that I got to sign a contract for. We got to have like clear defined things. It can't be this one arbitrary area that's like. Well, you're hey. a prenup guy then. There are, that's the always the thing about it. There are other legal amendments that you could put onto this to make. To yeah, make it don't sound like he gonna be settled unless you sign that other contract. This the side check contract. This is a side check to the main contract that I need you to sign. <laughs> it's just like, oh, all right. <laughs> That's what but it sounds like. It's not even a side contract, so this is the counter contract that I, that I have for the contract that you want me to sign. Mm, yeah, I feel that, though. If you cheat, you're done so. I, it's just like, even if I make like I say, seven times more than you do, I want palimony. I, I want emotional distress. But I don't know. But what are his six reasons? Yeah. The benefits of marriage. Benefits. Yeah. More and better sex. The popular belief is that marriage stifles sexual fulfillment. The reality is that married men are having better and more frequent sex than their single buddies who go to clubs each weekend trolling for a woman who's willing to take them home. <laughs> married women don't have to go through all the trouble of having to convince near strangers to sleep with them or crossing their fingers that's on their third date that they're going home. Married sex is even better than co- 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 cohabitating. Sex. Fifty percent of married men find their sex life physically and emotionally fulfilling, compared to only thirty-eight of cohabitating couples. Married sex produces an environment of trust and openness, allows couples to openly express their sexual needs and desires to their spouse. The results in better, more satisfying sex. I keep going, or y'all want to dispute that one? Keep going. More money. Married men are wealthier men. Married men earn between ten to forty percent more than single men. They also receive promotions more frequently and earn more growing performance reviews than their single co-workers. Married men also tend to save more than single men. It makes sense. When you're married, your entire outlook on money changes. Realizing that you have someone to take care of motivates you to do whatever it takes to support her. If you have been dragging your feet about marriage until you make more money, consider the idea that getting hitched might actually improve your financial picture. Keep going. All right. Better health. Married men are healthier men. They stay healthier and live longer than either their single or cohabitating peers. Just from a, just how much healthier are they? Take a look at these statistics. Men have fewer infections and lower f- risk of heart disease and some cancers. Married men are less likely to smoke, drink heavily, and be physically inactive. Married men are less likely to suffer from health conditions like back pain, headaches, serious, and psychological distress. Single people spend longer in the hospital and have a greater risk of dying after surgery. Nine out of ten men who are alive at age 48 are alive at age 65. Only six out of ten single men who were, who was alive at age 48 was alive at 65. Married men live ten years longer than single men, a whole decade. So if you're looking to kick the Green Reaper's butt, get married. Keep going. <laughs> a bigger smile. I like this one. Married men are happier than their single counterparts. In the Journal of Marriage and Family, studies show that 40% of married people said they were generally happy with their life. <sighs> well, only 25% of single people said they were. The bigger smile might be due in part because married men are getting more sex than single men. But marriage also provides incomparable companionship and forces to people to commit to something bigger than themselves, which contributes to happiness. True companionship. There's an old Swedish proverb that says, shared joy is double joy. Shared sorrow is half sorrow. Truer words have seldom been spoken. Marriage basically means always having your best friend around. My wife, Kate, always tells people that our marriage is a pretty is a party every day, and I concur. Everything I do from going to the gym to grocery shopping is 10 times more enjoyable with my wife by my side. Uh, some people say things along the lines of, I don't need marriage for companionship. I have friends for that. For all due respect to these single folks, you have nothing to compare your level of satisfaction with. I have been single and married, and nothing comes close to the happiness and companionship your wife gives you. Your wife is there in the middle of the night when your worries are keeping you up. She's there when you get off work and need to unload the frustrations of your day. She's there to give you a pep talk over the breakfast table on the day you have a big presentation. No matter how loyal a friend is, they're not family. They move, they ditch you when they have a hot date, they distance themselves when you have a big fight. You and your wife made a vow to be together forever. It's wonderf- 
wonderful to absolutely know that someone has your back come hella high water. Is that that all of them? Huh? Is that all of them? No. Oh, okay. One more. (laughs) Marriage can be as happy as you want it. With the divorce rate hovering around 50%, many men view marriage as too risky to take a chance. But marriage is not a lottery, nor is it a game of Russian roulette. You don't get married and then cross your fingers that you don't become one of the, the statistics. Divorce is not a disease that some people catch and some people have an immunity to. There is no erroneous area than that of falling out of love. Nobody falls out of love. One or both partners stop working at their relationship and they give up. Be absolutely sure you pick the right woman to marry, someone who would be just as passionately committed to making the marriage work as you are, and your chances of having a happy marriage is nearly 100%. No phone needs to charge. So, I feel like that list (laughs) applies to a... Select them group niggas is settled as fuck. Of people, arbitrary ass, no goal ass, having ass niggas. <laughs> that is a vicious attack on this. It sure is. I know it's people like, are talking about people that are mostly to come for him like LeBron, Duck, Dog, Spencer, Dinwiddie. I said the select group people are talking about people are more. It seems like that's more aimed towards people that are codependent. Oh, uh, that's spicy. Well, no. First, I'll take a look at the statistical information, and the thing about the statistical information mm. is that, like, they took the information from things that would probably naturally be biased to the to the opinion that they were trying to actually portray. And that's but, the point of an argument, though. <laughs> like, you can't escape thing. that. <laughs> but that's the thing. He didn't take any arguments from the opposing point of view and, like, just oppose them. And, like The point of the article is that there's a lot of information, and there's a lot of saying that you shouldn't get out like we can go and be like hey i can go on facebook right now and it's a whole bunch of niggas right now it's like polygamy is the answer or never get married i can see that very easily i very that's what the reason i brought that up because i very rarely hear like um especially a man champion like do it but like what did you what did you you know what i'm saying like what's holding you back oh. that's why i read the article because i'm like well let's see the other side I never really see a man saying like this is why you should oh I mean, those polygamy, I, honestly, the polygamy dudes, they're not really down with polygamy. They just want to date multiple girls or multiple women. But Usually. When, the girl, when the woman brings up, I want to date multiple dudes, they're hardly ever down with that. Usually. Oh, but I just never no. see the side some where someone's advocating for it. That are cool with that. But most polyamorous dudes are not really that about like that. All I know is. I can say maybe financially and only from the terms of you are generally viewed as more stable and more secure when you're married. Just from an outward, like, uh, corporate perspective. Like, that argument is completely and totally valid. So, yes, that one thing. But, no, I don't look at it as like, oh, I'm married to this chick. And so I got to work twice as hard to make sure that... uh, She's just as secure, too. No, my ambition was there long before she got here. And if it wasn't, I would hope that she would look at me and say, mm, he don't really have the ambition that he needs to to be there, to be the supporter that could be for me. And move on. Oh, uh, the support system. All right. My support system is weird. I've had the same group of friends for 15 some odd years and we've all kind of been there for each other through some really weird situations and some real tough shit so I can't really I can't really speak to a majority of dudes friends about like we've all a lot of us have probably been pissed at each other at one point but we've kind of never had just kind of like checked out on one another even when we're pissed at each other, it's just like, I picked up people I was irritated with. It was like, man, I'm out here stranded. I need some help. It's just like, I hate this nigga right now. But I'm still going to go get him because he's out there stranded. But but as you commented before, our relationships are weird in terms of dude friends. It's like, and like all my friends' girlfriends have said that. It's like, my friendships are weird. 
like we're a lot more attached to each other. And the fact that we've been around each other for 15 years or some, uh, some ridiculous amount of time puts us inside a different perspective than most friend groups, I guess. But, eh. But I can also see the argument of, like, they're always going to be there and there's never a time when you don't have the ability. Well, I guess that's also not true. They're not always going to no, be there. No, I was going to say, like, your wife is not always going to be there. Like, what if she's not fucking with you? That's how divorces happen. You like you exclude the fact that your wife could be a shitty person. Like that's all just this you is picking. Ba- that's you, you picking up being in a bad relationship. But that his perspective only assumes the positive, and assumes that the only reason that a guy wouldn't want to do it is because, hey, you think that he should be out here with a whole bunch of different women and you'll have less sex and you'll have less fulfilling sex I don't think that's true I guess the bigger question is why are you out here sex is my 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 determining factor when I'm looking at marrying someone like I mean it's included in my grand scheme of things but it's not like I was like damn when I was single I was having so much less sex than I'm going to be having when I get married that's not how I'm viewing it. Oh. Uh, for. What was I thinking about? Oh, for the. For your girlfriend being shitty thing. Why are you dating shitty girls? <laughs> it's like, that's always a. Or but women, what if you didn't know she period. was shitty until you got married and then. Dude. Now she has a ring. I feel like, like you didn't date her. Date long enough and someone advised you poorly. Because, like, honestly. With someone shitty, there's always someone who looks at them and they're like, "Man, I think know? you'll know." I think, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, will say I can't something. absolve nobody of that shit. I really don't absolve nobody because they didn't did something that made you recognize and you chose to ignore it. I mean, it yeah. always come out. Okay, well, let's say they're not shitty. Let's say y'all relationship devolves and y'all grow apart. Hmm. That doesn't mean that the other person is shitty. That just means that nah, you're grown in but, but that can also mean that she's no longer there for you. It could mean that, but it also means do you make the choice to say, I'm going to love this person or give up? That's what he's saying in there. Once the marriage is over, they've given up. And he's saying it could happen both ways, 50-50. Well, it's kind of one of those things where everyone thinks of love inside of that, like, I don't know, I guess that first 30 days or first whatever 90 days, that honeymoon period. Yeah, people think love is romance, and I've been the victim to that. I can't be absolved from that. That's just what I was fed and taught and blah, 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 blah. It's, it's, just like, it's definitely not romance. But that takes a minute for you to learn. You have love to learn that love is not romance. It's just like, love is never, is not not being able to hate somebody or like not be able to be angry at someone it's or the like, conscious it's, choice to choose love over and over and over again it's like you look at it and you're like man i fucking hate you but i'm choosing to love you despite how i might temporarily feel I about guess, you I don't, I don't like somebody but i could damn sure love you like i'm not looking but for him but i don't like you all those things without getting married to you is i guess my point like mm-hmm. i can choose love you to cherish you and to be willing to work on this through all things and to be there and to be open and to be supportive without having to get married I don't know what marriage does essentially Mm -hmm. that's exactly the point I was making earlier like he never illustrated what marriage changed Mm -hmm. and I don't really ever think it's a Financially, sure, I can get tax breaks, but should I get married to you because I can get financial benefits? Not really. I think on the lines of having that commitment on paper solidifies it. I know mentally it might not solidify it for you, but to both of y'all to be like, damn, I did make this commitment to you. I have the paperwork to prove this, don't I? I could look back at my marriage license and say, I did this, and I'm not going to give up on it if you so choose. Because you, 
this is the funniest shit. Niggas is so um, non and logic. When marriage is written down on paper, that's the most logical shit you have. The contract. And then now all of a sudden it's like, oh, wait a second. I don't need a fucking contract to prove how much I love to you. But you niggas is so logical and everything got to be one plus one equal two. Well, the marriage contract is one plus one equal two. I don't get that. But I still don't need a contract to do that, though. It's not. Hmm? I said, I don't need a contract to do that, though. Mm -hmm. I I don't need a contract to. The matter of fact, if you feel like you got locked me into a contract, that means. But that's the only time I ever hear a dude say, I don't need a contract. Everything else is law with y'all. When y'all play games, when y'all dealing with life, everything has to be one plus one equals two. It can't be none. No side of that. There's no other rules except for that particular contract. Niggas be like, oh my God, what? That's unfair and untrue. There's no contract that we have inside of our rules. There's no contract that. But y'all established some rules when somebody try to break it. But why can't we establish rules inside of our relationship outside? Mm -hmm. Because we don't need a paper. Me and Marcus have no paperwork between us, but we have established rules in the way that we treat each other, the way that we behave. Me and Charles have no paperwork, but there's established rules inside of our relationship. You're mm-hmm. more so speaking of social contracts. Than but so, but even then, but though. What she's is, but even a social contract, don't nobody got to speak of it. But what you're saying, but what she's saying is that men operate off of laws and how everything goes by a standard, and this is going to be a logical action, and that's true. But we don't use paperwork for any of that. Everything just has to follow. A certain accordance. But if y'all needed that paperwork, y'all show it, bring that shit up. I wouldn't. Well, I <laughs> yeah, wouldn't, you would. I wouldn't be Charles's friend if I needed paperwork for it. I'm saying if there was a position where okay. y'all had to have Even, that, here, here's you my would situation. Bring it. Even with that, right? Mm-hmm. I'm still not against it. I just don't feel like I need it. Like mm-hmm. I said, if it makes the other person feel better to have that piece of paper, it makes you feel solid and secure. Sure. Like I said, I don't care about getting married. It doesn't bother me to get married. It's just not something I'm personally going to push for. I'm never going to be the one like, hey, let's get married. Hey, let's do this. Hey, this is something we need to have. I'm never going to be that person. But if it's something you want to do, I'm down with it. I'm not against it. I don't care. It's just not something I feel like I need to have is the point I'm making. Well, it's like I can understand how that sentiment would probably piss some woman off. Probably not the woman that you're going to end up marrying. But, like, there's going to be some... When you say the words, I don't feel like I don't, I don't care if I marry you. I feel like that's gonna set somebody right the fuck off. Well, I mean, I man, <laughs> you feel some type of yeah, way like, about it. I don't know what to tell you. Just like, I don't I'm care sorry. if I marry you. To mean I don't care if I spend the rest of my life with you, and those two things aren't synonymous. What I mean is, I don't care if I go to a courthouse and sign documentation saying that. What I do care about is the fact that we have a working relationship that's healthy, that is open, and we have communication. And that I plan to spend all of my years, time, and energy building this with you for the rest of our lives. But that has nothing to do with marriage. I had to decide that before we got married for a marriage to be fucking successful. Because if I don't decide that before, then I'm figuring it out while we're married. And how the fuck is that going to work? So what did marriage really do? Oh, I'm not saying marriage yet. I don't know. I always think of... See, the thing about it is the way he put it is marriage is one plus one equals two or... I always thought of, like, a good relationship as an exponential. Like, a good relationship makes you more of what you already are. They magnify you. Ideally. And that could be... Because, like, everyone's seen those relationships where two people are together and because they are together you get more of the worst sides of them like mm-hmm. and you've seen those type of things but I think marriage can also work or not marriage or relationships can work like the inverse of that to the point where they make you more of the better parts of you and it's just one of those things where it's just like that's weird I mean, I agree. There there are situations where you being with somebody, just you being in a relationship, y'all bring out the best in each other. And y'all just being together just is a good thing. But at the same time, I don't see why getting married would change that or amplify that. 
I feel like the amplified the, the fact that you love it her happened and already. Spend your life with her and see her as the future person that you're not going to deviate from. All before you get to the courthouse and get married. Oh yeah. I mean. So if you, all of those things have been decided before this quote unquote important thing that solidifies all of this, how is it really the important thing? My mentality is the important thing. The way that I view you is the important thing. Mm-hmm. I guess it's more so. I guess if you're looking at it, it's like, it's not even necessarily, if I were to think about this in the sportsiest way possible, I'll look at golf. Like, the relationship is like the swing of the club, and the marriage is kind of like the following through. It's like, all all the lead up to the point of striking the ball, it's kind of like, okay, this is us getting ready. And the marriage is kind of you, like, hitting it. I guess that's what I'm, I guess I kind of understand that. If it didn't matter that much, then why, like, you know, if it's just the extra thing that'll make both parties feel better about it, then it's not really that big of a deal. Oh, no, we'll do, I'll do it. Yeah. I just don't see any value in it. I don't want, like, you asked me, do I think it's important? No. Will I do it? Sure. Mm-hmm. Because I'm sure that someone else is going to feel like it's important. If was, yeah, if I love her enough to the point where this is going to make you happier, then, then yeah. I heard the point I was making. Yeah, but I but I am just speaking from like the perspective of just Tony himself without the context of doing it for somebody else to care about this. No. It doesn't really mean anything. It didn't change how I felt about you. Oh, it's one of those things because like marriage doesn't necessarily mean the same thing that it used to. It's like even though you're married, I guess you can kind of weasel a lot of stuff and get out of shit. Or you could just ghost people. Like It's not like people who are married just don't just like split i understand it's technically an outlier but it's like it doesn't really stop you from doing anything it provides legal recourse but that's about it i mean that legal recourse is necessary but then again everyone kind of forgets there are things like common law marriage like if you live together for 10 years you're married regardless like it doesn't matter all you have to do is prove that you live together without a significant enough gap in your relationship to the point where you guys will be considered common law married. That is very true, but that's only in certain places. Yeah, and I kind of wish certain... That's kind of the reason why I like certain federal laws and things of that nature because it kind of makes certain things like that universal across the board. Like drinking age, it would be very, very annoying. I don't think that common law should be universal across the board. I mean, I think it should be abolished. I mean, you can't, as the government, just decide that I'm married. (laughs) What kind of shit is that? Who are you? That is a crazy big government. That is big brother. Oh my, like nigga, who, whose man's is this? (laughs) Sending me a joint tax return, like hey, yeah, yeah, y'all got married? No. No, we didn't. I don't remember that shit happening. We didn't decide. She don't even want that. Really? She ain't asked me one time. We she didn't want this for this exact no reason. <laughs> None of that. What did you do? For this exact reason right she here. She was talking about how she planned to move out next week. <laughs> we all living together for a decade and y'all are like, she's talking about she's how she's going to move out. She's still trying to fucking <laughs> leave. Yeah. Shit, shit grows apart, man. Yeah, it would, and she she upset because she just got <laughs> a big know. job and I got no we, money and I'm about to take half. She upset. <laughs> Look what y'all did. You're riding together for a decade and you're just kind of like common, common law because yeah. I'm grown and I can do what I want to. That is none of y'all business. Right. <laughs> At what point was that the government's business? What I'm doing with this chick? We Never ain't get like, married. You're right. <laughs> Mind your business. That's what you're not doing. You're not minding your business. Oh, you could if be. If it's universal your across the board, you don't get snaked. Even inside of that, it's like federally make it okay or federally not make it okay. But it's one of those things where I look at it and like, hey, we've been together. Like, if it's everywhere, you don't have to worry about like, oh, we've been living ag- because we were living together for five years in Cal or Ohio. We're common law married, but if we go to like, I don't know. Florida, we have to live together for like what four years? That that's real weird. Or 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 I or, mean, or I you feel could like... get rid of it. Or you could just mind your fucking business. Oh, I mean, mind Charles. What? 
can I come in your house and be like, hey, you've been dating this girl for six years. Y'all married now. I mean, I'm who, pretty who chill. Who is the person that gets to decide that? How did that shit even happen? We voted on it. No. They just why. serve you like that? Do you have to notify them? Like, how do you prove that is what I'm trying to say. Like, It doesn't become a thing unless you try to prove it. That's what I'm saying. Like, how it's do you like, prove it, that? Because, you have because, to prove because, it. Yeah, you have joint to prove. Joint tax returns. No, I got Because you ain't filing no, joint tax you returns. you can't file it. You're not married. You can't joint yeah, you file. You can't joint file. So, so, realistically, unless you go to a situation in which you... Because realistically, people not calling common law unless they need to be married for whatever reason. Like, it, there are people you're together for 10 years. They, yeah, common law, you're married. And they only bring that up because, like, y'all been together for 10 years. Y'all might as well just be married type shit. It's never, like, no one's ever pulling common law because I just need to be face. married. Well, it's also a legal <laughs> thing when it comes to claims on, like, say we live together, people, they live together for a decade, the person dies... You know what I yeah, also think no is fucked up? There's no amenity. That squatters get rights. What? Bitch, I let you stay at my house because you lost your job. You couldn't find a job. <laughs> for the mad. Funny to I me. Feel you, like you if no, you're wait, let me around, wait. Time out. Let me explain. Let me explain why it's this. <laughs> yeah, that shit is mad no, funny no, to me. Let me explain. Let me explain. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't get squatter rights after a decade. You get it after like a year or some crazy Something. shit. Something. It's just more. So I'm sitting up here looking at this. It's just like you're look, you're comparing squatter rights to common law there. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, bitch, you came in here. You, you just came in here and like, said it was yours. You, you son like, of a bitch. <laughs> and you were sitting around and you I mean were that's kind of what common law does. Yeah. It's just like you're yeah. sitting here, you lost your job, I let you move into her, and then you snaked me for a decade. <laughs> yeah, like what the fuck? I feel like after two years you would de- I would definitely say, get the fuck out or get a goddamn job. You're but, not even trying. But, get out. No. Alright, so what if they get you squatter rights after a year? And they live in your house because of this pandemic, boom, they lose their job at the beginning of the year, can't get one. And it's hard for them to get back in because they worked in the food industry. Now they've been sitting on your couch for the whole year. You own your house. You're not going nowhere. Now that boom, you know who lives there too? They do. What? <laughs> you know what Nigga, I'd be like? I'm going to shoot you. Yo, for real, for real. <laughs> I'm it's just like, it's time for you to hit pivot your career position. I'm going to Obviously, shoot Obviously, this food thing isn't going to work out currently. I'm going to shoot them. You need to get yourself like a telecommunications <laughs> job. Something shot. Else to do. No, you need Pull yourself I together. Not, and Charles is talking about all this. <laughs> sit yourself. And that, sit all yourself that sounds up. is them trying to fit, find all that, those things and get into school from my house. What you need to do is get the fuck out of my house. And then you can move into a dorm and everything's no, cool. No, no, you need to get. I don't care where you go, get out of my house. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, that that's the ultimate solution you to your problems. You can live on the street. Tony is just like, what if she comes in here? You kick her out. Get out of my house. I understand house. it's like unnecessarily vicious. And Get out of my house. Like, well, not technically cruel, just cruel. But it's just like, I don't have anywhere to go. You should have saved. The government house. said you should have six months of savings put away. Them niggas ain't got no savings. Get out of my house. Them niggas' credit score is zero. I want you to get out of my house. You should. You should have thought better. I. 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 I, I, I can't afford it. Well, that. That's unfortunate. Like you should move back house. in with your parents. <laughs> no, they gotta get out of my house. <laughs> nah, man. It's like it's whatever. Oh, uh, in terms of. Mary I am. Trip. There are so many laws that are so corner case to the point where. <clears throat> I am not going to allow those things to like kind of affect me. Am I, and I kind of move more towards large government just because universal laws are kind of good. Because no. like nobody wants to deal with laws where when like you have to be very, very careful about what you're, sh- you already have to be careful about what you're shipping over state borders and it's kind of annoying. The fact that I can't get BevMo here annoys me. I want booze shipped to my house. <clears throat> there is no Bevmo out here. No. Wow. I didn't even think about that. That is a crazy. That's because thing. of fucking state laws. That that is dumb as shit. And Bevmo you know if that was all controlled place. by the federal government? Bevmo is like a giant like grocery Weast. store, but for liquor. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. It is like there's so many things that we don't get state. because of because state by state the laws vary. Bevmo's pretty dumb. good, actually. Like, if you get a Bevmo membership, mm-hmm. like, you'd be getting the bottles for the love for real. Nah, so nah, dumb. It's like the fact that they, 
Did you know all the liquor in Ohio is basically collected by Ohio and then dispersed? So we can't get certain liquors because, like, the reason why we no longer carry the 151 in Ohio is because well, Ohio stopped buying it. That's nice. Good for them. Yeah, I mean, it's good for our livers, but still, it's one of those things where it's just like, like, state government gets the fuck in the way, too. And, like, thus, give me some universal federal rules that I have to follow. And I'll, I'll work it out. Oh. Um, no. I am still a um, little fact. Common law. It doesn't matter what the uh, state common law is. Once it goes into effect, it applies to all states because all states recognize all other states' marriages. <clears throat> so if you know it's crazy. So there's some states that don't have common law, yeah. but if your state got common law and you end up married by common law, it don't matter where you go now, bitch. You yeah, because there's there's no com there's no <laughs> common law in Colorado, shit. Alabama, <laughs> or DC. That's there's bitch. no common law. In Alabama. There's no such thing as common law. There's no common law rule in Colorado, Alabama, or DC. Only one of those things places are forward thinking. That's uh, like I don't know. I want to have anything in common with Alabama. Nothing to do with Alabama. That's dirty. I've never heard of anything good coming from Alabama. Anything else, Ash? No. Oh, we got a hundred followers, y'all. On Instagram. On it. On the ground. On it. On it. Next celebration is when I decide it's going to be a celebration. <laughs> Big bet. You got it. Next yeah. celebration is going to be cocaine and hookers. Hell yeah. Bring that shit. No. Look, they're like, no. What's the cocaine? Y'all can have all the, the hookers? Question mark? Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all in like committed relationships. Some of us are in a relationship. Some yeah, of some, 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 some of y'all are committed toys. relationships. <laughs> I, I, so I can't get no hookers. Actually, I just don't want cocaine or hookers. Mm. I don't want neither of these things. I've never wanted cocaine. <laughs> I've, never I've had hookers. Of, or hookers. I've had plenty of chances. Hookers sound fun. Yeah, that's more for y'all. That ain't really for me. Hookers don't well, sound like the most fun. We can like get you a dude hooker fun. if you really want to. That's weird. Hookers sound like they try to get paid and then get then go home. I look at it like this: hookers don't really seem like the chick that you really want to have around you if you want to have a great time. She trying to get paid. She charged by the hour. So strippers then. I, Same thing. No, no, they still trying to get paid. I need I just do some friendly, That's strange, as fuck. some just some friendly I'm chicks, some sex? friendly, down to earth, vibey chicks that are slightly freaky and want to hang out with you and think y'all are cute. Those are the women that you want to hang out with. Your girlfriend gonna punish you later. Shh. But those other two things are ridiculous. <laughs> they they're dirty. <laughs> Huggers and cocaine. <laughs> He don't get that text message at 3 in the morning. The fuck you say? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's never going to happen. <laughs> Go get that. Why, wish, why Don't never. put that on him. That's never going to happen. That was nonsense. That was funny. That shit funny. It's like, I don't know. this episode. What is wrong with you? <laughs> what the fuck? All right. <laughs> Are y'all done? It's just like, why? Why this one? <laughs> You pick uh, this one off the ether just to listen to? Right, no, <laughs> it always happens like this. <laughs> what the fuck? Why that one? Damn. Damn. What was the hashtag? Shit. Especially with the way we started. Oh, probably because of marriage.